want you to go ahead and hover over the thumbs down button because you're not gonna like what I'm about to tell you. Hey folks, I'm working on this little tractor. It's a John Deere 2630. It's basically the tractor version of that Clark UT60D forklift that we worked on a couple months ago. Four cylinder diesel engine with the John Deere loader. Very nice tractor. Anyway, the owner tells me that when he pulls a mower, it overheats after about 20 minutes and he thinks it probably has a blown head gasket. It's also extremely hard to start. They can't even start it without ether. So we're gonna look into that as well. It's very windy today, I can't get it inside. We're gonna do the best we can. So it's got two 24 frame size batteries. About 650 cold cranking amps. But I'll show you that this one's completely dead. It won't even power the fan in the load tester. So, that one smoked. This one over here is a little bit better. Yeah, it's still not good enough. So we're gonna replace both batteries. I don't like to replace just one battery in a parallel setup. Well, sorry guys, I've already done most of the testing and diagnosing so I could give these people a quote, but I don't think it has a bad head gasket. I have this kit here from Lyle. It's a head gasket tester. So it has a fluid that you fill this vial up with and then you use a vacuum pump to suck gases from the cooling system through the liquid and it will change colors if it detects combustion gases. There's actually a different fluid you can use with diesel engines. Uh, anyway, it passed that test. You'll have to take my word for it. It's kind of a pain to set that back up, but it passed the test. I also popped the upper radiator hose off and ran the engine. The water pump is turning. There is no thermostat. They took the thermostat out, hoping that that would help the overheating problem. So yeah, the water pump works and the head gasket, I believe, is good. Let me show you what I found though. So it looks like somebody hit something with this radiator cap. It's bent and then the bottom seal is missing. So this cap is absolutely not capable of making pressure. And I believe that's the reason that it overheats. It's like a three to one ratio. So it's for every one PSI of pressure in the system, you get three degrees of, of temperature, of higher boiling temperature. And uh, we're basically running a natural cooling system right now, which it doesn't have the capacity to cool the engine without pressure. All right, we're going to throw a known good battery in here real quick. And we'll do a little bit of voltage drop testing. Just to be sure, because I think the starter is bad. And my guess is that they just cranked this thing too long with a bad, with a bad battery. And, you know, a bad battery will kill a starter. These battery cables are pretty shoddy too. Yeah, that was smart. <laughs> Real smart. That's all it does. Not very good. So I'm just checking the voltage drop in the cables. This is the negative side, so we'll check from the negative battery terminal to the case of the starter. We should be looking for as close as possible to zero volts. So I'm gonna set this for min max. And it should hold the maximum voltage. Yeah, one volt, that should be fine. All right, so half a volt through the solenoid. So voltage drop is not the problem. It's got a bad starter. Let's see if we can get it to start. I'll show you guys, I think the voltage regulator is bad. The charge light just stays on. Yeah, 
it just doesn't have enough to do it. You should not have to ether, ether this engine. It's direct injected. It should start right up on a warm day like this. Well, you got to take my word for it. A little lightning bolt light stays on all the time. So I'm gonna pull the alternator and the starter. We'll take him down to my auto electric wizard and see what he has to say about it. Hi, Pop. It's a hot one today, isn't it? All right, folks, you're gonna have to bear with the uh, rattling AC machine in the background. I've got some parts. My auto electric wizard looked at the alternator. He said it's good. A little noisy, but it charges just fine. He sold me a new voltage regulator. Come on. There it is. We've got a thermostat and a gasket, a radiator cap, a new gear drive starter, and two new batteries. Sorry guys, there's not much of an angle to show you that starter going in. It's blocked by everything, loader, loader frame. It's pretty simple. Especially the gear drive starter is smaller, so it's easier to get the bolts and nuts on it. Appears to be the same. Quite a bit smaller. Yeah, this old one. Doesn't look too good. Something inside I think has come apart. But it actually lives up here underneath the instrument panel. Well, if this was my tractor, I'd replace the battery cables. These things are in pretty sad shape. But this is a budget conscious repair, so we're going to do the best we can. One thing I do want to fix though is they just put a regular bolt in this terminal. That drives me crazy because then you have to have two tools to loosen it. Yeah, there's not much left of those. Plus they've been jumped so many times they're basically worn out. Anyway, you can buy these actual square headed bolts for batteries. They're not even expensive. So I'm going to go through and spread these. At least a little bit. Okay, batteries are installed. Voltage regulator is installed. These cables are shot though. I did the best I could, but they need to be replaced. We can either make them or uh, I don't know if you can just buy those from the dealer or not. This is a pretty old tractor. Alternator is installed. I think that's wired up right. And the new starter. That's the same gear drive starter I used on that forklift and it worked pretty good for that. So should help her spin over nice and fast. It's charging, but it's not charging correctly. I'm only getting like 12.6 volts out of the alternator, and it's making about 5 amps at 1500 RPM. Should put out 30 amps. So I don't know what's going on. I asked my auto electric wizard, he said that it may have a problem with the alternator that didn't show up on his test machine. Because I guess he just feel, full fields them and tests for some output. It's not a true load test. So we're going to pull the alternator back off and probably replace it. It's kind of annoying because I took it to him so he could test it. So I didn't want to just throw parts at it and here we are throwing parts at it. But it's not right. The charge light comes on 
or it stays on until you get about 1500 RPM. The, RP the alternator does nothing at idle. So that's definitely not right. All right, the parts cannon has been fired. A rebuilt alternator has been installed. Let's see what happens. There we go. Sometimes you just have to replace everything. Good. Bad. Can you spot the difference? It's pretty obvious. So the cap needs to be fully sealed around the neck of the radiator. And if it's working correctly, it should keep pressure on the coolant, which keeps it from boiling. The coolant never reaches a boiling point. It's always a liquid. This system doesn't have an ex external surge tank. There's just an air gap above the coolant to allow the coolant to expand. And the cap has to be able to vent the excess pressure. We don't want the pressure to get too high and blow something out. So that's what the spring is for. And then when the system cools down, we need the pressure to be able to equalize or normalize. So there's also a check valve built in. That's this guy right here. So high pressure, well, let's say 10 PSI to open this one to let the gases out. And then very low pressure to open the check valve to let gases come back in to normalize the system. All that stuff is missing on our bad cap. And I've seen this several times before, not on a tractor, but on cars. Usually what happens is if you're making short trips, like you're running to the store or whatever, it'll be fine while you're driving. The water pump's turning, you got air flowing across the radiator. But when you shut the engine off, the coolant temperature actually rises because now the water pump's not turning, the radiator's not doing anything. And it still has all that heat from the engine that it has to absorb into the coolant. And it'll start boiling and it'll boil out all the coolant within a few minutes of you shutting the engine off. And then you go to drive it again and now it overheats right away because it's low on coolant. So, yeah, sometimes it's the simple things, but this is a critical component of your cooling system. It has to be right. thermostat's actually labeled with an arrow that says towards radiator. So we will put that towards the radiator. This thing leaks like crazy. There must be no valve cover gasket to speak of. That or the injector return lines are leaking or something is just pouring out over here on this side.
Well, folks, we did not fix the problem. Definitely did not. That sucks. Well, folks, the good news is she starts right up and the charging system is working. We've got that sorted, but the test drive did not go according to plan. I made it about 40 minutes and then it overheated and boiled a bunch of coolant out the radiator cap. So we have not fixed the issue. Also, once it warms up under a load, there's a huge cloud of white smoke coming out of the breather the whole time it runs to the point that when I turned around in somebody's driveway, the nice lady came out and asked me if I needed help and whether or not I needed a fire extinguisher. So something's majorly wrong. I'm leaning towards a cracked head and it passed the head gasket test, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't have a crack that opens up once it's warmed up. So I don't see any choice. I'm going to go ahead and pull the head off and we're just going to take a look, see what we can see. Four cylinder engine. I don't think it's too bad of a job. It is currently about five minutes before eight o'clock PM. I'm hoping to have that head off by nine. I do not have the energy or the desire to film it, so I'll bring you back when it's done. And time. Just made it. Would have been done sooner if it wasn't for this stupid exhaust flange. Who does that? They put the pipe over that and then they have a Marmon flange? Anyway, exhaust, or the, uh, God, it's too late. Head gasket came off in multiple pieces, so. It's gonna be hard to tell what really happened. <sighs> well, folks, things don't look any better in the light of day. In fact, they're a lot worse than I expected. I definitely did not get the full story on this tractor. I was under the impression that the overheating problem was relatively recent and that it would be a pretty straightforward fix. I think this has been going on for a long, long time and they've done some serious damage to this tractor because of it. Let's start with the cylinder head. It is cracked. My dad loaned me some dye penetrant, but we don't need it. I can show you where it's cracked. So that's the first one that I noticed right there. It's right through the fire ring of cylinder number four. But probably the worst one is cylinder number three. Something has happened here. I don't know what. That's not a crack, I don't think. But it is cracked right there through the valve seat. And I'm sure that there's more cracks that I can't see with the, my visual, you know, just visual inspection here. A mag particle check would surely show more damage. So that's a problem that cannot be fixed easily. This cylinder head probably needs to be replaced. Just find a used one and toss this one in the scrap pile. But it gets worse. The engine block itself is also cracked. Not catastrophically, but it is cracked. Don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's cracked right here between that coolant passage and the head bolt. It's also cracked right here between that coolant passage and the head bolt. And again, I'm sure there's more problems that I can't see just with a visual inspection. And then the worst problem is here on cylinder number three. So there's where our smoke and blow-by was coming in. There's pretty significant damage here, you know, scuffing to the cylinder wall. And it's actually missing a big chunk out of the top of the piston. So, yeah, that's not good. And there's no easy fix for that. It needs, this engine needs to be overhauled at a minimum and it needs a new head. I don't think that those cracks, well, as long as the head bolts don't strip out, I don't think that would be too big of a problem. We could probably just put some thread sealer on those and get away with it. But uh, yeah, they hurt it pretty bad. And that's unfortunate. There's no easy way out of it. 
Anyway, I want you to go ahead and hover over the thumbs down button because you're not gonna like what I'm about to tell you. What they wanna do is install a new head gasket and put the old head back on just like it is and send it down the road. And uh, that's all there is to it. They don't wanna fix it. So that's what we're gonna do. It's uh, unfortunate, but it's not my tractor. It's not my decision. There's nothing I can do about it. There's plenty of other problems. I mean, this thing is in sad, sad shape. Where do you even want to start? There should be some side grill panels here to kind of keep all the crud out. Those are missing. And so the radiator was completely stopped up. I blew it out the best I could, but this radiator is in pretty sad shape. Also, I think they've been running it on just straight water for a long time. See all this calcium buildup? It's 10 times worse inside the coolant passages in the engine. Let's see if I can show you. So like here's one on the engine, or on the cylinder head. I can actually chip that stuff off. It's just coated inside there. Here's a good one. And that means that this well, so the other problem with that is that this is a wet sleeve engine, so the, the coolant actually flows around the cylinder liners, and if you don't have the proper coolant, you're going to get cavitation. So once we pull, if we pulled those liners out, I'm sure we would find big corrosion and cavitation problems on the inside. Every cylinder on the loader needs to be rebuilt. They all leak profusely. Something's majorly wrong with the steering linkage. You can turn the steering wheel almost a full turn before anything happens with the front wheels. It's almost impossible to drive down the road. I just about ended up in the ditch multiple times. The temperature gauge doesn't work, so you don't even know when it's overheating. Something in the back end here is leaking pretty bad. It's probably the cross shaft for the draft control mechanism on the three-point. It's got a hose here underneath the valve that's leaking really bad and then there's a plastic line here that runs from the charge pump in the p in the th words Wes it runs from the charge pump in the transmission up alongside the engine to a small tank there in front of the radiator that lines rubbed through that's the major leak that you see on the floor there this cylinder over here probably leaks the worst I mean, it just pours a stream out the whole time the engine's running. It probably leaks, I don't know, a gallon an hour, <laughs> maybe more. I just, I don't know. And then this hose right here is shot, completely shot. It leaks pretty bad. <sighs> I don't know where you could ever stop with this thing. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Smash that thumbs down button, let's put it back together. All right, folks, it's done. It's going home. 18. I don't know what else to say about it. It did not go Nine. the way I expected, that's for sure. Words of wisdom? None that can go on the internet. There you go.